Well, Cape Hatteras National Seashore, and I don't know why I have so much trouble with that, is a beautiful natural resource. It's about 15 miles long. You drive down Route 12 and you drive right through the center of it. It is free to enter. Um, there is hunting here. Um, there is a beautiful lighthouse here, body um, lighthouse, but it is a great place to burn. And if you're gonna come to Alligator River and uh, Pea Island, you're probably gonna drive through this seashore. So um, if you're gonna drive through it, you might as well stop and take a look at it. Well, um, one thing I should tell you about um, Cape Hatteras uh, National Seashore is that it is open to hunting. Um, this blind is normally closed by in hunting season. I'm not sure why it's open because my understanding is hunting season is going on right now. And when I say hunting season, specifically here, it's um, waterfowl right now. It is um, January 10th, January 12th. I really should know what date it is. And um, the only thing that I think is available right now is waterfowl hunting. Um, and the hunters are really restricted to where they can hunt. This area that is around me right here is the only area that they can hunt. There are designated blinds that you can go to to hunt. But hunting season only occurs for a short period of time during the year. I think it's only two months here for waterfowl. Um, I know they do hunt deer here and um, uh, some other things. But I mean, for us as birders, we should be more aware of waterfowl hunters because they use the blinds. So the, as you drive down Route 12, there are a series of areas that you can stop that blinds are there. Now during hunting season, you can't go there. And before people start leaving comments down below how evil it is that they allow hunting here, um, hunters supplement or basically pay for the National Refuges and the National Park Service through a tax that's on their ammunition, on their firearms, and on their archery equipment um, that we as photographers don't have to pay they, um, they also pay fees to be able to hunt here, where I, as a birder, was able to drive into the park without paying any fee at all. Um, also, to give you an idea of how much the federal government actually contributes to the Park Service and National Refuge, 1 16th of 1% of all money that's collected in personal income tax, this is not counting corporate taxes, property taxes, or anything else, just personal income tax, goes to the National Refuges and the National Park Service. So hunters basically supplement our use of the, um, the national refuges. Now I do buy my duck stamp every year and I do buy a national pass every year to contribute to uh, the park service. I also belong to several organizations that also contribute to the um, park service. But hunters pay the lion's share of these um, fees for these resources. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, you may not like it, but that's a simple fact. The first place to uh, come to is Body Island Marsh area here. There's a beautiful parking space there, all concrete. I think there's six parking spaces there. Three of them are handicapped parking. This boardwalk is all handicapped accessible, so you can easily get in here and get out without any problem. The only other place in this refuge that's like that is Body Island Lighthouse. All the other blinds that you will drive by on the way down here, most of them don't have parking spaces, so you're parking on the side of the road. And to get to the blinds themselves, you have to muck through water and mud to get to them. So that's something to be aware of. But with that being said, if you're willing to tr do this, you will be very well rewarded by having a place to yourself and you never know what you're gonna run into. I think you have a little bit more flexibility. I mean, a lot of people drive through this refuge right to Pea Island, which is an incredible place to bird. But sometimes I think coming to some place like this kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone. You're not gonna see the number of birds that you're gonna see at Pea Island, but you might see different variety of birds.
Well, I just pulled down the access road to Body Island Lighthouse. Now this road right here is probably a mile and a half long, if it's that long. But the road is surrounded by these beautiful longleaf pines. Now in the National, um, on the Hatteras National Seashore uh, Road, there are very few like forested areas like this. Most of it is open areas. It's either marshland or just swampy areas. So there's very few trees here. So an area like this attracts birds. I see brown-headed nuthatches, uh, red-breasted nuthatches, white-breasted nuthatches. I've seen long deer out here, bald eagles, uh, white-winged doves. Um, I've come out here and recorded on my list here 40 or 50 birds in a couple of hours on this road here. So if you're at all interested in photographing birds, don't just run out to the uh, lighthouse and get on the boardwalk. Stop here and spend some time looking for birds. Um, something that um, a friend of mine, Sam, he has, and I'm going to put a link to his YouTube channel right here in, in the description, is he said to slow down and take some pictures of common birds. Now, last year, as you know, I never achieved my goal to photograph 300 species of birds in North Carolina. Um, and I have loads of excuses, but one of the things that I didn't do was photograph a white-breasted nuthatch. This bird is a very common bird here in North Carolina. Um, I see them every single day at my bird feeder. I go out, white-breasted nuthatches, just assume that you're going to see one. And yet, I never photographed one. Um, so, you know, Sam, I'm going to take your words to heart and slow down a little bit and take some pictures of those birds. But... I'm going to take you to the boardwalk next. Well, I'm at Body Island Lighthouse. As you can see, that's the Body Island Lighthouse here. That's one of six sisters, they call it. Those are six lighthouses that are on the outer banks of North Carolina. Um, this island here is an incredible place to come and bird. Now if you look over here, there's a comfort house that's over there. There's also a boardwalk that you can walk down. This boardwalk will take you to a marshy area and then to an open water. In the wintertime, you will find tundra swans there. You'll find shovelers here. You'll find all kinds of wildlife, uh, waterfowl here. But even if you don't come here in the wintertime, in the summertime, you'll find clapper rails, Virginia rails, you'll find swamp sparrows, you'll find uh, swamp wrens here, here. As I said before, as you're driving up the road, you'll find brown-headed nuthatches, white-breasted nuthatches. You will find uh, all kinds of animals here that are resident here. And the great thing about this area here is because it's basically the only area where there's a forest in this national refuge here, this is a great place to bird all year long. So, um, if you enjoyed this video at all, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel because that helps us in the YouTube world. Leave your comments below. I enjoy every one of them. Become a Patreon supporter. Your support allows us to keep doing this. My name is Sean Leahy. I want to thank you for watching.